Hey guys, Captain Paramedic Tanner Perkins here with the EMS Division. Today we want to talk about the X-Series Advanced and the new functions that we have now with this monitor. Both the real-time feedback for BVM and the TBI dashboard. So to use this technology, we're going to need two pieces of equipment. We need the AccuVent cable that comes with the monitor, as well as the AccuVent flow meter disposable piece, which will have one for each patient use. To connect these cables, so on the right hand pouch of our monitor, we're going to take the AccuVent cable and we're going to plug it right here in the lower right hand corner. You have about a six or eight foot long cable and then you take your AccuVent um, flow meter, it'll snap on, it's got four prongs, make sure that they're all four can, uh, pushed, you'll see a blue light and that lets us know that it's activated. It's got a swivel connection, and then when we remove it, we want to line it up north-south and pull off. We'll then take that piece and we'll add it to our BVM with our HME and entitled CO2. As we attach this to our BVM setup, we want to do it in this way. We have our AccuVent uh, flow meter closest to our patient in our ET tube or our supraglottic airway. We then have our entitled CO2 to measure the exhaled gases. And then third in line, we have our HME to protect us in the exhaled air from our patient, which goes to our BVM setup. And we'll connect that to our ET tube or our supraglottic airway or our IGO. Now that we've shown you the basic layout of the AccuVent cable in connection with the uh, flow meter, we're gonna show you how the real-time BVM feedback and the TBI features are displayed on the monitor. Now that we have our Zoll X-Series Advanced turned on, we have our real-time BVM feedback cable attached to our patient, and we have it either on an ET tube or supraglottic airway, such as our IGO. There's no buttons to press to initiate the real-time BVM feedback feature. It simply starts as soon as we squeeze our bag for the very first time, we'll see our dashboard pop up. Now this dashboard, remember, was created only for ages 18 and older, we are not using this for pediatrics per Zoll. You see it's broken up into three sections. The first section on the left is our volume. So when you squeeze that bag, it tells you exactly how much you're delivering to your patient. This is a good feature that we had um, on our ventilators and now it's available for our BVM. Its preset volume is 450. That's how it comes um, preset into our monitors. We have our center section here, which is our um, volume, uh, our perfusion circle. As that fills up, um, it lets us know that we've reached that uh, set volume of 450. If we don't reach it, you'll see that it will turn yellow, and we only partially fill. On the far right, we have our rate. It's preset to 10 breaths per minute once every six seconds, which is also our countdown timer. When we're out of parameters, we are yellow, and when we're within parameters, plus or minus 50 in our volume, we are green. Much like CPR feedback, we wanna be green across the board. Now, if we need to make adjustments for our patient's size, we have the ability to do that. So if we have a small, frail patient or a very large patient, we can adjust the volume, much like we did on the ventilator, at six cc's kilogram of ideal body weight. So here we'll say we have a bigger patient and we'll adjust that to 500 milliliters. So now we're going to show how we have a patient who is decompensating and they've turned into a code and we need to do CPR. With the BVM feedback we have our um, dashboard there that we're now um, going to be used to seeing. But to get to CPR feedback it is going to look like this. When we get CPR feedback, it now drops our dashboards down to the bottom. We get both of them side by side, and they're a little bit smaller than what we're used to. Still gives us the same information. We get a depth. We get a rate for our chest compressions, a release or recoil, and our perfusion diamond. And then with our BVM, we get the volume, the countdown timer, and our rate. 
What we'll want to do is have the monitor pointed to our two providers, one who's doing airway and one who's doing chest compressions so that they can both make sure that they're within the parameters on the dashboard. Now we're going to demonstrate how we get the TBI dashboard and what it has to offer us. So with our real-time BVM feedback cable attached to our patient, again with an ET tube or superglottic airway like our iGel, um, we'll be bagging our patient and getting real-time BVM feedback immediately. And wow, well, we're used to seeing that. But to get to the TBI dashboard, we're going to have some buttonology. Over here on the left-hand side, we're going to press the back arrow once and then we're going to press it twice. You may have stumbled upon this feature, but the TBI dashboard is selected here. The head, you select that, and our TBI dashboard pops up. With this dashboard, we're going to be broken up into four quadrants. Upper left is going to be our real-time BVM feedback feature, which we're used to seeing now. And we can make adjustments um, by using the arrows to that field, again, just like we did before. The next field is our systolic blood pressures. This is going to trend over 15 minutes of time. When we turn on the TB, uh, TBI dashboard, we also place the monitor in auto BP mode so that it takes BPs on the five minute timer automatically. And then it trends them here with the plus sign. In the upper right hand corner, we're going to trend in tidal CO2 over a three minute timer trying to maintain between 35 and 45. And in the bottom right, we're going to be trending SpO2, again, trying to keep it above 90%. If at any time we want to widen those parameters, we can highlight the specific field and adjust it. Like here in Entitle CO2, we can go from 30 to 48 and widen it to 20 to 50. SpO2, we can drop it down to a lower parameter of 70. In systolic BPs, we can widen it to 60 to 180. The presets are fine where they're at, but if you want to see a wider view, you can click there. Remember that BPs will now take on an auto timer every five minutes after the TBI dashboard has been initiated.